Are there any sort of notable emerging concepts that you may have not mentioned previously or emerging research in the field that um, is starting to gain a little bit more attention and that obviously might be a little bit more showcased at this meeting specifically? Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, um, I would say that, you know, one of the things that we've been kind of thinking about in the MS field is, you know, we're, we're pretty good at treating inflammation in terms of kind of new focal lesions in the white matter with our currently available DMTs. I think one of the things that we've recognized is that there continues to be somewhat of a lag in terms of our ability to treat and to understand actually what's going on in the kind of more neurodegenerative process of MS. And I think one of the things that has come out quite clearly is that the presence of, 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 of the different factors that are actually driving that. Um, and to me, kind of, I think, you know, we focused a lot on brain um, as an imager, of course, for me, it's, it's easy to talk about that, but I think the brain only holds part of the solution to kind of that more neurodegenerative aspect. And so we're thinking more and more about the role of the spinal cord in MS. We've got a couple of, um, you know, a couple of the scientific sessions um, have some presentations that specifically are looking at MRI measures of tissue integrity in the spinal cord. And then also we have a couple of posters that have also addressed the question of what does the spinal cord look like in MS in relation to kind of disability measures. So I think all of those um, really highlight the fact that we need to think about a little bit about how can we better measure spinal cord? How can we intervene perhaps on spinal cord? And what are the early predictors of spinal cord disease that might let us know how an MS patient's gonna be doing down the road? Now, one of the other things that I think is important along those same lines is something that we call compartmentalized inflammation. Um, and this is some, you know, it's a kind of a more chronic type of inflammation. It's not so much those focal lesions that appear. Um, and um, I think we have great imaging markers for these. Um, and so those are being more used in clinical practice. And we actually got a lot of uh, uh, abstract submissions that were focusing on ways of measuring that compromised inflammation in the MS brain, both in the form of lesions, um, paramagnetic REM lesions, which are lesions that have a rim of iron, and also in lesions um, that are slowly expanding over time. So there's definitely some um, data going to be presented on, on those two imaging markers. So I think, you know, those are the things that we're, we're thinking about mostly. I think to me, it's always exciting. I'm not a basic scientist, um, but to me, it's always exciting to see along those same lines, what are the very promising early investigations into MS? And I think that's what's a beautiful thing about Actrums is that, you know, it's a single track. The, the sessions are mixed between clinical and basic stuff. And so many times you're hearing about scientists who are doing basic research, sometimes in animals that are looking for new therapies and new pathways where we can target actually not prevention of inflammation, but actually reversing injury that's already occurred. Um, we talk about remyelination, we talk about affecting macrophages, affecting astrocytes. Um, so that's, that's I think those are, are topics that are, are, are interesting. They're going to be um, they're going to be intermixed in the different sessions that we have a lot. Of, we have several basic mechanism talks, um, so those should be exciting as well.